Joining us is Dr. Bruce Dunn, Assistant Professor of Floriculture. Well, Bruce, welcome to Oklahoma Gardening. Thanks, Kim. You've uh, set up a wonderful demonstration here for us showing how different production techniques affect our final poinsettia product. Could you walk us through the process? And uh, apparently you start with some really small plants. <laughs> yeah, so we'll start with the cuttings. Uh, usually we buy them in as uh, rooted cuttings, like what we can see here. Usually they'll be a little bit smaller than this one. Mm -hmm. um, you can buy them as unrooted cuttings as well or callus, and those will be a little bit cheaper than the rooted cuttings. Mm -hmm. I like to go ahead and go with the rooted cuttings because in that case, we already know that we've got that started. Yeah, you have gotten through that initial establishment. Mm -hmm. So once we have the cuttings, then we usually have to decide, you know, what size pot that we want to grow them in. Uh, generally, you can have the smaller ones in a four and a half inch mm -hmm. pot, something like this. The uh, traditional size is in a six inch. Okay. That's what's uh, most common. And then you have the larger one, something like this one in an eight inch pot. Now each of these has one single cutting per pot. How many go into the larger? Yeah, so for the eight inch one, generally we'll put seven cuttings in it, six around and then one in the center. But okay. yeah, the four and a half and six inches have one cutting. And that just makes a fuller plant in that large pot. Right. Uh, then the other thing, usually once we get them potted up into the, into the pots, uh, generally wait a couple of weeks, we want to see that the roots reach the bottom, and then we've got to pinch these plants. Mm -hmm. If we don't pinch them, then we get something like this, just wanting to grow straight up on us. Yeah. Um, but if we pinch them, then remove this apical dominance out of here, and we encourage these lateral branches to come out and you get something like this. Mm -hmm. Now a lot of gardeners are familiar with this. We do this in our own darkolias and other plants. <laughs> right, so and then mm -hmm. depending on the, the, the type of pinch, you can do a soft pinch, which is just removing the very top uh, piece of the apical uh, stem here, or you can do a harder pinch and remove, uh, you know, maybe one to three inches, mm -hmm. still, still leaving about seven nodes, and you can see ultimately that's going to affect the size of your plant as to how is your uh, pinching. Yeah, you get a much more compact plant. Uh, with the harder pinch. Right, so you need so you need to pinch them to get this lateral uh, mm -hmm. branches to come out to have this good growth on them. Mm -hmm. It's really obvious the, how, yeah. how nice and full it is. Right, and then the other thing though for the eight inch we don't pinch those we just let those grow straight up because we have so many cuttings in there we don't we don't need those lateral branches to come out. Mm -hmm. uh, once they get going for a while uh, probably about four weeks, then we may have to come back through with the, with the PGR. So we're tracking the heights on them. We want all of them, depending on the size, whether it's the four and a half, the six inch, or the eight inch, we're, we're shooting for uh, ranges on heights. Uh, generally, the six inch come in good, and the eight inch, like I said, we just let those grow up. But the four and a half, to keep those small, we have to uh, use a PGR, a plant and growth the, regulator. Right, plant growth. And that's uh, kind of a hormone mimic. Right. Right. And so basically it inhibits the GA synthesis in the plant, so it keeps them shorter mm -hmm. and doesn't encourage that stem growth. In this example here, we have plants that we didn't spray any uh, PGRs with, and these right here we sprayed with uh, 500 parts per million B9 and 500 parts per million uh, cyclocell. Excellent. If you look real close, you can see that the internode length is much longer on these untreated than on the treated. Right. Now another important factor with poinsettias is they respond to day length in getting their color. As the day length shortens, they'll start to put on their color. Um, and I see here you have one that's still green. <laughs> right, yeah, so these are short day plants mm -hmm. and so basically whenever we get into uh, the shorter days, longer nights, they originally thought it was triggered by day length but it's triggered by the night. Mm -hmm. uh, but basically we have an example here that these were left under light uh, for an extra uh, six weeks and so we can see here that these aren't colored versus these are the uh, bracts on these are already turning color. And so in production areas where there's light pollution oftentimes they'll cover these with a, a dark cloth at night to exclude that light. Uh, another application might be if you hold your plants over from one year to the next. Right so yeah we, mm -hmm. ha we have to monitor and, uh, and check and see. Based on the scheduling, you can put dark cloths in there if you want them to ripe, uh, to uh, start turning color a lot sooner on the bracts. Uh, mm -hmm. For us, we just go ahead and let it go under natural photo period. But yeah, you want to make sure that you're not around, uh, uh, for it being a, a producer, not around a billboard or any kind of big building that's got uh, lights on mm -hmm. during the nighttime. Now, once you get to this stage, I imagine the nutrition is also very important for the plant. Right, so yeah, as we're, as we're growing it, uh, definitely nutrition is very important and we've got a nutrition study in the other greenhouse if you want to see that. Okay, let's take a look. All right. Okay, Kim, this is that fertilizer trial that I was talking about. 
Uh, this shows you an example here of a plant that doesn't get any nitrogen or any mm -hmm. fertilizer. Yeah, very so, yellow, very stunted. Right, mm -hmm. and then you have ones, a step up from that would be uh, five grams of fertilizer here. Mm -hmm. and a little bit stronger growth. Mm -hmm. Right, so, and then you have one that's about 10 grams of fertilizer. Okay. I noticed the color's getting better as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so that, that could be just uh, the position here in the greenhouse, or it could be fertilizer. And then you have this one here, then this is 15 grams. So we can see clearly the, mm -hmm. the difference between like a five mm -hmm. or 10 and then the 15 grams. So that's what, we, what we'd wanna go with on that. And when do you start the fertilizer treatments? Early on in the yes, production? Yeah, as soon as, it, as soon as it's in a, uh, as soon as we put the cutting into the pot, we go ahead and add that fertilizer as well. Okay, and these are top dress, slow release. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So these are top dress and then about uh, six weeks in after planting it as a cutting, we have to add extra uh, magnesium we do magnesium sulfate and molybdenum as well. Okay. Now you mentioned watering is also being critical um, for root development and avoiding diseases. Right, if you give them too much water, uh, something like this plant here, they will rot out on you. You can mm -hmm. tell with the yellowing, the rolled up leaves. Also, if you flip the, the plant over, you can see the brown, uh, mm -hmm. le the brown roots in here yeah. as well versus Here's the- Here's a nice uh, healthy one. Right, with the white roots there, mm -hmm. so. Again, so you want to make sure on watering that they dry out in between waterings. Mm -hmm. That's good tips for our customers as well right. when they get the plant home. Now, speaking of which, the Horticulture Club is going to be holding their plant sale pretty soon. Yep, so it'll be, it's always Thursday and Friday after Thanksgiving. So this year it's uh, November 29th and the 30th. Mm -hmm. uh, I think from running it from uh, 7.30 to uh, 5 o'clock. And you have a wide variety of poinsettias. You also have some other plants available. Yeah, so I guess I should mention that it is at the uh, Teaching Greenhouse Correct. down on Farm Road uh, by the Colvin Center, the tennis courts. And yeah, we also have some uh, dianthus, some palladium, some uh, ornamental cabbage, uh, and some chard as well. well. They always have beautiful plants and for a wonderful cause, so I certainly look forward to that. Thank you so much for setting up this demonstration for us, Bruce. Thanks for coming out. Thank you.